Glim Hotel. Hey, it's Friday, November 13th, 2020. And we are live. Uh, it's been a very busy day. Uh, I was did Roland Martin unfiltered. I was doing a lot of work before that. Uh, then had to get ready for this show. And um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's so much going on. It, uh, it, it's coronavirus is spreading. Uh, more people are being affected. And then there's fear about, okay, what do we do about uh, Thanksgiving? What do we do about the holidays? Should we get together, et cetera? So, you know, it's uh, it's crazy right about now. All right. Calling numbers 313-778-7600, 313-778-7600 is the calling number. If you have a question or comment, um, we're going to deal with the history of Friday the 13th. And um, why do people fear that? Why do people fear that? Before we uh, jump into that topic, uh, let's go to the phone lines quickly. Let's go to Karen, line one. Karen, welcome to the African History Network show. Thanks for calling. Tell us where you're calling from. Hello, calling from Detroit. From Detroit. Okay, go ahead. You're on the air. Do you have a question or comment? Okay. Yeah, a couple things. Uh, number one, as far as um, the whole Trump thing and what he's doing and acting like he doesn't know he lost. You know, I'm just kind of amazed that a lot of my um, the media people and these news, news guys, it's just all a pro because he has 72 million people that are not watching him on TV every time, or but he still has that many supporters. So it's really like the Jim Jones thing. He's talking to them. He's not talking to people like us that, that understand what's going on because they keep saying he might run in 2024. And I'm just lost on why people not really seeing that. Like, they're like, I don't think he act like he lost. And he knows he lost. He's a masterful manipulator. That's, that's what he's mastered. It's unfortunate that it's twisted and he used it for bad instead of actually using it for good. And well, that's, well, you know, I just want well it's a couple things. It's a couple things. It is. frustrated about it. Well, well it's a couple things. Yeah. One, uh, he had largely been in denial uh, early in the week. He had largely been in, in denial. And people around him are trying to... Uh, yeah, people around him trying to console him, but filing these frivolous lawsuits to appease him. The other thing is, is that Trump is trying to raise money. Trump is trying to raise money. So they've been sending, they've been sending, they've been sending out these emails and saying they're trying to raise money to, uh, uh, pay for the uh, recounts and pay for the legal fees and things like this. So Trump is trying to raise money also. Mm-hmm. Um, he said he's going to run in 2024. Uh, I really don't think he's going to run in. Tw- I think he's going to have so many, so much legal problems. Uh, when he leaves office, I don't think he's going to run yeah, in 2024. Said he's going to be in jail. That's well, yeah, possibly, but uh, right. he, but, but 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 he, even if he's not in jail, he may plead and possibly get a felony because you're going to have charges of um, uh, campaign finance law violation. In, in, in the payoff to Stormy Daniels. That's a campaign finance law violation, which is a felony. So, uh, so he, he is right. going to have a whole host of problems after this. Uh, go ahead quickly with your, uh, with your next comment. And then I got to move no, on no, to no, this no, next I topic. I agree with you, but okay. I mean, okay. Next comment would be, you know, you just said about the holidays, you know, I know we're spoiled to doing certain things, but this, this strain of COVID is going through, I mean, we lost a friend Wednesday. We lost one yesterday. And a friend of mine, her son got it today. He's 22. Mm-hmm. We got to we gotta cut it out because what we're doing on the fire, because we, we're really on, on lockdown in a good way. I don't look at being in my house as a lockdown. But it's not about these gatherings. You can get over it. I, I get the family thing. Some people just get together because they're doing the turkey and dressing. Okay. But what's more important here? To possibly be here for the next holiday or to gather, and this stuff, I mean, it's really, really horrible this time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have friends. I don't even preach to them anymore because I see some people just can't be by themselves. They got to socialize, and if it's risking they go, problem is they're risking everybody else because this virus won't go away. So hopefully people are hearing right. me and just, you know, I know everybody can't stay home, 
first responders, I'm not talking about them. But people with a little common sense, it's not about going to these clubs. I got 50 and 60 year old friends that are still going to clubs, DJing. Uh, they haven't oh. gathering. It's, it's, That's a death trap. Stupid. Yeah. Don't do that. All right. Just, yep. Okay. All right, Karen. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I know how it is. Uh, Thank you. A close friend of mine yep. uh, has a uh, coronavirus also. So, uh, you know, we, we have to be very careful. All right. So when we look at Friday the 13th, I'm going to turn the screen share on also. Uh, also, you can. Uh, on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF on Facebook. They're broadcasting uh, this show. We're broadcasting on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, and on my YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Um, I'm going to turn the screen share on so you can see this. This is part of a presentation that I've done in the past dealing with uh, the history of Friday the 13th and also deal with, um, this ties into some of the history of the Moors also, the Moors in Europe. Um, let's see, you know, where, where the heck, you, okay, here we go, application, this is what I want. All right, so let, let's let's look at some of this history here. Um, and let's see here, just a second, wrong one. Let's turn this on. So, uh, you, you know, a lot of people fear Friday the 13th, and don't know why. And then you have people who fear the number 13. OK, so because, you know, it, it used to be years ago, may not apply much now, but it used to be years ago that in a lot of multi-story buildings, there was no 13th floor. It will go 12, 14. Right. So we look at uh, some of the origins of the fear Friday, the 13th Christian, uh, you have Christian origins of uh, the fear of Friday the 13th. And then you have um, other origins that deal with folklore and tie into the Knights Templar. So when we look at the Christian origins of uh, the fear of Friday the 13th, fear of Friday the 13th comes from two separate fears. One, the, num the fear of the number 13, the fear of number 13, and two, the fear of Fridays. Okay, both fears have deep roots in Western culture, most notably in Christian mythology. Right now, I, I should probably say this from the beginning. Anytime I do a presentation, I know I may say some things that are outside the circumference of your own awareness. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, just because you never heard this before, disagree with it or don't like it, not mean it's not true. It just means it's something outside of, uh, outside of the circumference of your own awareness. And you have to do more research to understand what it is that I'm talking about. Okay. So both fears have deep roots in Western culture, most notably in Christian theology. All right. Now, uh, the Christian fear of the number 13, when we look at where does that come from? So the, the number 13 is significant Christians because of the last. There were 12 uh, Jesus who because the letter J was created till 1630 A.D. is about before the letter J is derived from the letter I. So there were 12 people. Uh, Yeshua and the 12 apostles for 13. Judas, uh, 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 the apostle who believed Jesus was the 13th in the party to arrive. And if you're watching uh, on the screen here or you see this famous painting done by Leonardo uh, da Vinci, uh, it's of the last painting. It's uh, around 1425 AD. Okay. Now, um, now, Chris, uh, so Jesus was crucified, also part of part of this fear. You have the Last Supper, you know, the Last Supper. But Jesus was crucified on Friday in the biblical story. This is known as Good Friday. Uh, some Christian theologians believe that Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit from the tree of now Friday. And I mean, it's the, uh, I'm not going to get deep into it, to when when you actually read that story, and if you read Christianity Christ by Dr. G. Jackson, okay, and he talks about this story, and um, when you understand conchology, you understand you acquire knowledge, elevate your conscious level, okay, and to uh come into the full understanding of the power of the Creator, Creator's force inside of you, okay. Not to get like deep into this, but when when you the Genesis story. They were told not to eat of the tree of knowledge. They would become likened unto a God. Not to eat a tree of knowledge. 
because they would, be, would become an unto a God. So what tree do you want them to eat from? If you don't eat from the challenge. So uh, some Christian theo theologians believe Eve ate the forbidden fruit from the tree on a Friday. Also, the flood involved in Noah's ark really began on Friday as well. Okay? So we see this the Christian influence in number 13, and we see the, the fear of Friday also. That one influence. Um, then we see sailors were particularly wary of Fridays and oftentimes refused to ship on Fridays. Many Christians would not begin any new projects or trips on a Friday, fearing they would be doomed from the start. Now, uh, when we look at Christian fear of Fridays and women, Christian fear of Fridays and women, some historians suggest the Christian fear of Friday linked to the early Catholic overrushing of quote unquote pagans and women, pagans and women. So it, well, when we dealt with, um, what was it? Halloween, we did Hallow's Eve and um, All Saints Day, we talked about the term pagan and how pagan, uh, it comes from the Latin word, Pagan, its oh, understanding original form does not mean that's heathen or something that is negative. It referred to uh, it referred to a rule. It can refer basically something that is indigenous to a people. Um, it can refer to people today who we call people who are country or in country. So something indigenous to a group of people, especially like a rural district. Okay, it, so because of European white supremacy, uh, probably also European after archaeology. Pagan has taken on a negative, connotation, but it's, it's not negative in its essence. If you go to the generic, look up the word pagan, and then look at the etymology, the, the word history, the words and the etymology of pagan, it wasn't necessarily something negative in its essence. So in the calendar, was devoted to a uh, goddess or fifty from Roman myth, Venus. She goddess of love, beauty, sex, fertility, prosperity, victory, and desire. Venus in Latin means love or desire. Um, you can check out on the online etymological I use um, et, uh, etymline.com, E T Y O N L I N E online um, okay and check out the entry for us as well all right and we've got nini we've got uh, ray renee's already ahead 13078 okay so renee is already on it so what what, what is pagan okay and i will look quickly here at the definition the word that is misused is negatively about a group of if we look at american heritage dictionary which is on or you could look at miriam web online as well um, it basically refers to an adherent of a polytheistic in antiquity, especially when viewed in contrast to an adherent of a monotheistic religion. Okay, um, and we you look at the uh, the word origin of again, it takes you back to Latin, uh, it takes you back to late Latin, Ganis, uh, but in uh, but in Latin, it's a country dweller, civilian. And it comes from the uh, word pay, P A S Pegas, which can refer to tree or rural district. Okay, so in its S, not something negative, but it's used as a negative connotation, uh, especially the way it's been used, you know, past 50 years, something like that. Okay, let's see here. Uh, so, Christian fear of Friday and women. So, when horsemen or Nordic men, okay, adapt the Roman calendar. They named the day after Frigg or Freya, uh, or you also see it, uh, or, or you also see referred as Freya. Okay, so Frigg by F R I G Frigg, or Freya F R E Y A. Okay, she was the wife of Odin. Okay, Odin. When we talk about the 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 mythology of the Vikings or the Nordic, uh, the Norse or the Nordic uh, people, and Odin in the father of Thor. Or the god of thunder okay we see thor in marvel comics but thor comes from this nordic mythology as well and then also um it's from research and talking to different historians thor was influenced by the uh orisha uh dango 
who uh, was the Orish, Orisha of Thunder as well in the Yoruba spiritual system of Fa, which is practiced by the Yoruba in uh, Nigeria. And it, you have uh, it spread to, it, because of transatlantic slave trade, Fa and variations of Ifa we see spread into the Caribbean. We see spread into Brazil. Uh, and then it, it came here as well to the U.S. all, okay? But Frigg or Freya, okay, was also the Norse goddess of love, sex, fertility, and marriage. And she was the wife of Odin. Now, originally, Odin uh, was uh, Wood, the name Wooden, W-O-D-E-N, Wooden, okay, originally. And when you look at the origins of the days of the week, this ties into um, this mythology. Okay, Wednesday was called Wooden's Day. Frey was uh, Freya's Day. Okay, to Freya or Fre wife of Odin. Day was Thor's Day. Okay, um, and then Monday was, if I remember correctly, Monday tied into Moon. Sunday, of course, the sun. When you look at if you recent origins of the days of the world and where those words come from, they tie into uh, uh, Scandinavian myth. Now, uh, very quickly here to uh, not get too deep into this, but I already did get deep into it. Uh, you can look up more on Odin at uh, Cyclopedia Britannica online, Britannica.com, Britannica.com line, or go to Mary Webster online or any online, the O D I N. Look up Odin, they'll have some information on, on there, okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's continue. Okay. So Christian fear of Fridays and women. Now Frigg, F-R-I-G-G, or Freya, or Free R-I-I-A, she was known to other Germanic foes as, uh, uh, well, Frigg, depending upon which European language you're looking, okay, see a variation in the name. But Frigg, F-R-I-G, was known to Germanic peoples as Freya, F-R-I-A, 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 Freya. And name lives on in the word Frey, F-R-I-D-A-Y, or Friday. It was known as Freya's Day, okay? Reference to the wife of O. And there's a uh, painting from 1905 of Odin and Frigg down from their window in the heaven. Um, it's a painting done email, email, E-M-L, uh, Doppler, O E P L E R, email Doppler. You can search for you can search for uh, email Doppler, Odin egg, and you can uh, check out that. Okay, this all ties into mythology, but this mythology uh, ties into the terms of the days of the week that we use. It ties to the uh, Friday the thirteenth that some suffer from, and then and then the fear of the nineteen is called triscophobia. Triska Decafo, T R I, um, which is the fear, unfounded fear of the nineteen. Okay, let's continue here. Norse mythology, Renee said on uh, Facebook. So both goddesses of uh, Venus and uh, Frey uh, or Fem, were strong female figures and posed a to male native Christi Christianity. Both goddesses or female deities, Venus and uh, and Frey or Freya, strong female figures and posed a threat to male-dominated Christianity. The theory is that the Christian church in retaliation vilified the day named after. Okay. So you have incorporated into this mythology in the Christian church and um, it's different culture that you see that go into um, the history of the 13th. Now, the vilification of Frigg could have also played part in the fear of the number 13. It was said that Frigg would often join a coven of witches, a coven, C-O-V-N, of witches. There would normally be 12 witches, and Frigg would make number 13. Now, a similar Christian, a, uh, a similar Christian legend states that 13 is an unholy number 
because it, because it signifies the gathering of 12 witches and the devil. Now, we when we talked about Benjamin Banneker earlier in the week, and I talked about the book Egypt on the Potomac by Tony Browder, and the book's right here, Egypt on the Potomac by Tony Browder. Um, let's pull this back up, blow it up. And we talked about Benjamin Banneker, and it, one of the things that Egypt on the Potomac deals with is how the layout of Washington, D.C. is a copy of ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt, all right? And we know that Benjamin Banneker uh, did the uh, design the layout of Washington, D.C. He did the survey. One of the things Browder talks about in this book is also the number 13, and, and the number 13 is a number of transformation and resurrection, transformation and resurrection. So, um, but that's coming from ancient African uh, culture and coming from ancient Kemet, the Nile Valley region of Africa, coming from that knowledge, okay? So some people feared the number 13, but in general, we didn't. Um, okay, so just not to get too deep into this, but uh, I'll leave it right there. Okay, so a similar Christian legend legends that teen is an unholy number because it signifies the gather 12 witches and the devil, all right? Okay, now what is a coven? Coven of witches. A coven just means a witches, all right? Um, we love Miriam Webster, a coven of individuals with similar interests or activities. Um, another definition is an assembly or band of usually 13 witches. That's a coven. Now, the number 13 also uh, has been considered pagan because there are 13 months in the pagan lunar calendar. The lunar moon, lunar in re reference to me, can also corresponds to the human female menstrual cycle, which is basically 28 days, and um, connecting the number 13 to femininity, connecting the number 13 to femininity. Now, in numerology, 13 is the number of change, transformation, and resurrection. And then that ties all into the mythology of Asar, Osset, and Heru, who the Greeks call Cyrus, Isis, and Horus. And to make a long story short, um, Heru being cut up by his brother set into 13 pieces and set around the um, um, Nile River and, you know, around ancient and set collecting the body and putting the body back together and directing uh, the body in, in the one piece that was not found was the palace. The Tekken that we talked earlier in the week, the Tekken or the Greeks called an obelisk is a soul of uh, resurrection in this in Revelasar. But the Washington Monument, the Washington Monument, Tekken, OK, and, you know, plays up in Freemasonry uh, in a lot of the 50 of the fifth signers of the Declaration of Independence. George Washington, 50 of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence were uh, Freemasons and 13 of the 39 signers of the U.S. Constitution were Freemasons as well. So you're going to see this influence coming from uh, Freemasonry and there in, in Freemasonry, they're dealing with the watered down teachings coming out of the Nile Valley region of Africa. Uh, specifically ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt. So if you read Nile Valley Contributions to Civilization by Tony Bowder, he gets deeper into that. Okay, purpose of radio, I don't want to get too deep into this, uh, but you can read Egypt Atomic by Bowder and also Nile Valley, Nile Valley Contributions to Civilization also, Tony Browder. So when we deal with them, um, um, Lunar, as I said, that's in reference to when we look at the word moon struck, moon struck. OK, moon struck meanings romantically affected by or as if the moon romantically affected by or as if by the moon, because there was a belief uh, hundreds ago that 
the people act is influenced by the face of the moon. So, uh, like if you act crazy at night, uh, not just straight, but be any city, people are, oh, there must be a full moon out there. That's in reference to this. When we look at the lunatic, okay, lunatic, the definition affected lunacy, okay, um, and this ties into uh, uh, the root word is um, Luna, which means moon. So affected with lunacy means that the way you act is impacted by the moon. So if you, you look up these in the dictionary, lun lunatic, moonstruck, lunar, they all reference moon. And then this ties into the phases of the moon and um, understanding how this, this, this deals with them. That's what this is. So I'm trying to get too deep into this, but all this ties into the 13th. I'm just, I'm just skimming the surface with, just to give you an, uh, to help you gain a better understanding of possibly maybe something that's outside of the circumference of your own awareness. All right. Now, if uh, this is okay, this is from Miriam Webster. When we look at the origin of the word lunatic, the origin of the word lunatic, right? It takes you through the various langu languages, but it takes you to Latin, Luna, L-U-N-A. And it says from the belief that lunacy or insaneness fluctuated with the phase of the moon. All this is right. If you go to the dictionary, all this is right there. You have to look at the word, the word origin. Because the dictionary is, a, is like a really a good history book. It helps you better understand language, but it ties into history as well. First known used 14th century AD, okay, lunatic, from the belief that lunacy fluctuated with the phase of the moon. So you you watch uh, the movies, the howling, the old, you watch all the old movie, movies we used to watch around Halloween, right? The howling and um, you, you see the werewolves howling at the moon and things like this and the full moon out, people acting crazy. This, this ties all into those old, what they may call old wives tales. It's like that, right? How much time we have left in the show, Mike? Let me know. All right, let's continue. Uh, we got about three minutes. Okay, cool. All right. Now, other reasons Friday the 13th is fear is the Christian Christian perspective on Friday, number 13, are relevant today, but it only was part of a part of a fear of 13th or it's known as frigatricophobia. Frigatricophobia is the fear of the number F-R-I-G-G -G, frigga. Okay, you just in T R I A, you just type that's gonna come up with Frigga Triska Decafo. All right, and that ties Frigga, Freya, Freya, with of Odin okay. in the Scandinavian mythology and Odin, the father of war, and all this. All of comes together. All this is all this is connected. Okay. Some people trace the fear of 13 to ancient Norse Nordic mythology, uh, referring to Avian. Where of uh, hero B A L D E R was at a banquet by the previous god Loki, who's a half brother to Thor. Okay, at least in the comic book mythology, a half brother to Thor, L O K I, crashed the party of twelve Loki number thirteen. All right, so you go and you study the origins of Easter. You look at the origins of Christmas. Well, maybe I shouldn't say that. On that. Okay, because I had to explain all that. But anyway. <laughs> Is let me this is much deeper than you thought it was. Okay? A lot of times is is more than maybe what they just told in Sunday school, something like that. Let me put it like okay. All right, we in this discussion on social media platforms, uh, the African History Network, Facebook, the African History Network on Facebook, and my YouTube channel, Hotel I M H E P. Um, we'll be back Sunday night. 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Time, the African History Network show. If you like this type of information, you can donate to the History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through cab, dollar sign, the AHN show through cash app, then through PayPal, PayPal, forward slash the AHN show, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. This helps us to keep broadcasting six days a week, finance the show, keep doing the research because we're here six days a week now instead of one day a week, Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. to 12 midnight as of October 12th. All right, remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct wrong behavior. 
It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you Sunday night. All right. Peace. Okay. All right. Let's continue here. Okay. How's everybody doing? Let's continue. How's everybody? Okay. We got Jessica, uh, Jason, just a few of the people watching, Renee, Christy. Okay. Just a few of the people watching. And I don't want to get too deep into this because we have people listening on the radio who can't see uh, what I'm showing. And then, you know, on that, if it was just if it was just me just doing a Facebook live broadcast, it's cool. But on the radio, you know, they have like Christian programming on the on the radio on the radio station. I'm on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, WFDF in Detroit. And um, we have people who have different levels of understanding. So I don't want to get too deep um, uh, right now. All right. So let's continue here. How's everybody doing? Also, uh, you can visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. All of my DVD lectures are there, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We're ship, shipping our orders this week. This really helps us. This really helps support the African History Network, helps us keep doing the research, stay on the air also, purchasing the DVDs and digital downloads, okay? So um, appreciate that and uh, shipped out some orders today. We have more going out this week. Uh, we'll post a link here. And my uh, bundle, we have the bundle pack of the Africans who were here before Columbus, the Africans who were here before Columbus. We have Black Migration, 1619 to 2019. Um, all that at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. That's a sick DVD bundle pack, the uh, Black Migration, 1619 to 2019. That ties into our show from, um, what night? I came, all my days running together. Um, I don't remember what day, what the hell were we talking about? Um, World War One veterans, uh, African American World War One veterans. Uh, we talked about that on Veterans Day. We talked about the Red Summer in 1919 and things like that. So I have a six DVD bundle pack that gets into all that information. All right, it's been a busy, it's been a long week. The Knight Templar, and uh, you all can check out some of this information. Um, HowStuffWorks.com, HowStuffWorks.com. Uh, they have an article How Friday the Thirteenth Works. How Friday the 13th works at HowStuffWorks.com. Then also History.com, the official website of the History Channel, has an article, Friday the 13th, History of a Phobia. Friday the 13th, History of a Phobia. Okay. And uh, African-American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. We'll let you know how you can advertise uh, with the African History Network. Okay. Uh, we have some new ads going up uh, this week that I'm working on. I'll be recording commercials uh for for uh, businesses so uh you can advertise on on our weekly show money on our daily show monday through friday our sunday night show is sold out but um african-american business owners post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast and uh, we'll let you know how you can advertise with the african history network uh also all right so let's continue here let's look at the knights templar okay, so the knights templar tie right into the history of the moors in europe and um, they tie into ancient Kemet and Freemasonry as well. Okay. So all this history uh, is connected. All this history is connected. And you have to understand a chronology of history. So I, I've gone and studied all the European holidays that we are taught to celebrate in this country. And a lot of them tie into mythology and, you know, things like this. But you have to have an understanding of the chronology of history. So the Knights Templar. Uh, tie into this, uh, tie into this fear, the number 13. Another piece of the legend, Friday the 13th, being unlucky, deals with milit with, uh, the military order called the Knights Templar. The, the Knights Templar. Now, on Friday the 13th, over 137 AD, Friday the 13th of October 13 AD, scores of the French Knights uh, Templar, with the order's Grand Master, Jolloy, were arrest orders of King Philip. They were tortured, and this would be the day knowledge stopped and was associated with evil. So the knights are um, were taught by the Moors, basically. Um, knowledge that the Moors are taking in from Europe. Take, I'm sorry, taking in from Africa, the Nile Valley of Africa. They're taking this uh, this this knowledge of science and mathematics and and history, astronomy, 
all this, they're taking this into Europe and teaching Europeans, right? The Knights Templar were, found, were founded around 1118 AD during the Second Crusade. And the Crusades are, are these fights between, these wars between uh, Christians and the uh, Muslims, okay? A lot of this has to do with over control of Jerusalem. First Crusade is right around 1095, 1096 AD. This gets into a lot of European history that I ain't gonna get into right now. But just understand all this history collide, the Crusades, the Knights Templar, the Africans, the Moors, now Valley of Africa, Freemasonry, Scandinavian mythology, the days of the week, all this stuff ties together. Okay. Um, so the Knights Templar were founded around 11 AD during the Second Crusade by um, Hughes uh, de Payens, P A Y E N, not exactly sure how to pronounce that, along with eight relatives and acquaintances. It was, um, it was a military order called, originally called the Poor Knights of Temple of King Solomon, Poor Knights of the Temple of King Solomon, later known as the Knight Templar. All right. And this is all from a presentation that I've done dealing with um, the history of Friday the 13th. And I tie Friday the 13th into the history of the Moors. It's, it's, it all ties together. And I think, did I ever do this? I, I can't. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think I did this presentation live in front of an audience, but I can't remember if I recorded it. I have like over 40 lectures on DVD. I can't remember with this one if um, I ever did this in front of an audience. I don't remember. Okay, so ultimately, the plethora of folklore surrounding Friday the 13th don't have a lot to do with uh, people's fears. The fear has more to do with people's personal experiences, people's personal experiences. People learn at an early age that this day is unlucky, and then they uh, will look at the things that happen to reinforce this. Thing. Okay, it's like a self prophecy. They don't realize that bad things can happen day of the year. Bad things can happen day of the year. Okay. All right, so uh, you know how did we move? Okay, so this ties into the Africans known as the Moors, and you know we've talked about the Moors before. Um, we've talked okay. uh, very briefly um, because we could be here for the next two hours, and that ain't in the night. Um, the, the Moor ancestors were were known as Romantes. G R A M A N T E S, who are on the audio podcast or shows. These were a African people throughout North Africa, the Garamond, Hannibal Barker in um, Carthage. And we talk about the Battle of the CDC and the Punic Wars. Hannibal Barker was guilty as well as St. Augustine. Now, the Moors, according to George G.M. Jane, book stolen, were the custodians of an Egyptian mystery system or Kemetic mystery system. These teachings will bring Europe out of the ditches, okay? um, coming out of the Dark Ages, late 100s, early 1500s. And let me see very briefly here, and I'm trying to see how far do I want to go with this. Okay, I ain't going to go too much further. Because um, this gets into a whole another presentation, literally for the next two hours. When we look at the origins of the word M-O-O, the word more is derived from the word moros. U R O S, which means black or dark color. The route this word called them Mari, M A I, Mari. Okay? The Mari, Northwest African people, very dark skinned. Northwest African people, very, very dark skinned. The Romans were referred to the region of North Africa as Martania, Maritania, Mar M A U R I, Mari, Maritania, Latin. And means and of the black skin. You'll also word Marish, Marish, M A U S H. You when you choose Mari Gators, M R I Mari Gator. That's in reference to the Moors. You read Golden Moor, edited by Dr. Ivama. This book here, one of the best books in history of the Moors, Golden Age of the Moor, edited by Dr. Ivan Van Sertima. Okay, it has essays from Dr. Jose Pimenta Bay and Renoko Rashidi, uh, Dr. John G. Jackson, um, Dr. Wayne Chandler, who I've viewed a couple of times, Dr. Wayne Chandler. 
Romans later adopted as a reference for the Gan inhabitants they entered in Africa. If you read page 5, 27, and 180 of Golden Age of the Moor, and to have events certain, um, those are just for the information on this slide I put together. Okay. And, um, okay. So that gives you some background information on the origins of the of this fear friday the 13th where this comes from gives you some homework to do um check out the article from history.com oh there's another one also who were the knights templar there's one article from history.com that was one of the sources for the, that presentation that i did and then uh the other one from History.com official website of the History Channel, Friday the 13th, History of a Phobia, Friday the 13th, History of a Phobia. And we also see um, from HowStuffWorks.com, Friday the 13th, how, how Friday the 13th works from HowStuffWorks.com, okay? But there's, there's no need to fear the number 13 or Friday the 13th. Okay. And, um, a lot of this ties into what may be called superstition, but we see that when the, when the Knights Templar rounded up in France, October 13th, 1307, this was said to be the day the knowledge stopped because the Knights Templar was some of the most educated people in Europe, you're talking about at a time when the Moors go in in 8th century AD, 711 AD. Um, the about 90 percent, some sources may say 95 percent of Europeans are illiterate. The priests, the monks, were the most literate people in Europe. You had kings and queens who were illiterate, couldn't read or write. And the Moors are teaching Europeans how to read and write. They're introducing the uh, periodic tables. They're introducing something uh, that they call alchemy. Alchemy. Al. It was is an Arabic prefix, which means of the uh, alchemy, alcohol, algebra. All that is Arabic. And they're, they're educating Europeans, because from the perspective of these Africans, you're here on earth to learn. So they taught anybody freely. Now, that's all going to come back to kick us in the behind. Everything they taught Europeans came back to kick us in the behind. The Moors are going to introduce sugar and cotton into Europe. According to Dr. Jose Pimenta Bay, it was like ninth, 10th century A.D., um, Dr. Jose Pimenta Bay has a, a lecture, the history of the Moors in Spain. And then he also has another one, the decline of Moors power in Spain. And it's on YouTube as well. He's just, he's brilliant. I interviewed him. He's one of my first interviews back in 2010. And in these lectures he's doing. So he, uh, he used to teach classes on the history of the Moors at Temple University in Philadelphia, where my friend Dr. Malefic Ketty Asante is. Uh, Dr. Asante is the chair that um, Afro-American Studies Department, Afri Af African-American Studies Department at uh, Temple University. But Dr. Jose Pimenta Bay, in his lectures, he's showing you uh, paintings and like slides of paintings and things like this, documenting this African presence, presence of the Moors in Europe. And when I was talking to him, he said that he got those paintings from Harvard University's archives, Harvard University's archives. So when you go, when you go study this history, you have Europeans who know this history because they have the evidence. You have Europeans who know this history and know the greatness of Africans and know how Africans used to uh, also ruled in, in Europe to various extents that ruled in Europe as well. Um, the word Maurice 
M-A-U-R-I-C-E. The word Maurice is um, in reference to a Moorish boy, Marie. Okay. So what's going to happen is we see the history of the Moors in throughout European history. We see it in European architecture, in European art. We see it in their languages. We see variations of the word more, more, things like this in European languages, Greek, Latin, Italian, French, Spanish. Okay. But it's also in the European bloodline as well, because these Africans, Moors are going to intermix with the European population, have sex with Europeans and produce offspring. This is how you get Queen Charlotte Sophia that we talked about earlier in the week, who is the wife of King George the third. King George the third was the king that the 13 colonies are revolting against during the during the American Revolutionary War, 1775 to 1783, where King George the third's wife, Queen Charlotte Sophia, was of African descent, at least on her mother's side, African Moorish descent, at least on her mother's side. Uh, so uh, this is this is a deep history it's, and it's all connected. This is why you have to understand a chronology of history. All right. Well, look. Um, if you have this type of information, you can donate to the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, then also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. You want to donate 10, 15, 25, 50, 100, um, whatever it is. And then through PayPal, if you want to set up for a recurring monthly donation, you can do that also through PayPal. African American business owners, post the name of your business here on the thread of the broadcast. Email us at customer service at African history network dot com. OK, um, we can get you up and running uh, this weekend. And. Um, one of our advertisers is the profit room dot com, the profit room dot com. So a lot of people want to learn about uh, the stock market, learn about investing, learn about wealth creation, things like this. So the Profit Room is a stock market trading and education company that has mentorship programs that are designed for beginners. They teach individuals how to create generational wealth through trading and investing in the financial markets. OK, how to create generational wealth through trading and, and investing in the financial markets. Uh, they, their, their specialty is day trading and providing one on one mentorship. They have classes that start up periodically also, but they also teach about stocks, options, futures and the foreign exchange markets. So uh, visit the website, theprofitroom.com, P-R-O-F-I-T, theprofitroom.com. And then also visit the uh, you visit the website. And then there was an article that blacknews.com had about the profit room also very interesting article check that out as well at black um blacknews.com all right i i, I want to um let me see so let me see if i can pull this up here um one of the so when you advertise with this i put together a video commercial for you okay you send us a script or a bullet point put together a video commercial for you and when we re-air these shows um on our social media platforms you're commercial with air during the show. Okay. And I want to show you, uh, one of the, uh, ones I've done all these from basically most, unless you send me your own commercial, I, I did it. I'm the one that did the commercial. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Let me pull up. Um, okay. I'm going to show you uh, a couple of commercials that I did. This is for the Black History Mo Mobile One-on-One -on -one Museum. Black History Mobile One-on-One -on -one Museum. When I do it, 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 there was a problem with the editing. The tag AfricanHistoryNetwork.com is not going to show up at the bottom, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, but uh, I want to show you this. This is on our YouTube channel. This was a. Um, Let's see if we can turn on the screen share so you can see. That would be helpful. Uh, here we go. Let's minimize this and turn on the screen share. All right. 
Okay, how you doing, Renee? And uh, let's see here. On Mobile Museum has carried on the rich legacy of the Black Museum movement in America by showcasing original artifacts of the Black experience at colleges, universities, K through 12 schools, corporations, libraries, conferences, and cultural events, making it the most traversed Black history mobile exhibit in American history. Dr. Khalid El Hakim is the founder of the Black History One on One Mobile Museum, and he is a highly sought after public speaker on topics of black history, social studies, education, museum studies, hip hop and race relations. Dr. Khalid was named among the change makers for NBC Universal's Erase the Hate campaign and listed as one of the 100 men of decision for black enterprise. He recently founded the In Hip Hop Archive, the campus of Western Michigan University. The Black History One Mobile Museum is currently scheduling in-person and virtual exhibits nationwide. For more information, please contact Dr. Khalid Hakim directly at 336454973 or visit the website at blackhistorymobilemuseum.com that's blackmobilemuseum.com so email him at b 101 at yahoo.com b history 101 at yahoo.com are you ready for a new black economy well hapi the role of economics in the development of civilization is a brand new documentary that will set you on a new path of knowledge and enlightenment the hapi film gives viewers a snap of our economic history from the dawn of civilization right up until today the underlying theme of the film is the interrelationship between the three essential components of economics politics and culture Hapi brings together the brightest and most prolific minds in the fields of psychology, history, business, and politics, such as Dr. Leonard Jeffries, Professor James Small, Dr. Julian Malo, Dr. Zahi Hawaz, and Jabari Osazi, and more. Together, they deliver a message of cooperative economics, financial independence, and a pride that we can all be inspired by. The film is on sale now, is streaming on all digital formats. Or DVD, please visit Hapi, H A P I, Hapi.com. Use for code Hapi, A H N, for a 10% discount. Have you tasted the world famous No Frowny Brownie yet from the Pink Bakery? All right. If so not, uh... what are you waiting for? They are vegan, gluten free, and free of the big eight allergens. While eating their No Frowny Brownies, the fabulous Miss Tabitha Brown said, they were very good, very good. And you know, it says that they are. The Pink Tree is the first owned Big 8 Allergen Baking Mix Company. Go to pinkbakery.com. That's the pinkbakery.com to order their Nerani Brownie Mix today. All right. So that's an example of the type of commercial. Now, they won't have AfricanHistoryNetwork.com down at the bottom. That was... <laughs> I left the tag in there when I was editing that show that these commercials are running in. But those are all commercials that I designed and did the voiceover. I guess the voice sounds familiar. OK, so <laughs> um, African-American business owners, email us at customer service at African History Network dot com. Customer service at African History Network dot com. All right. Uh, so we'll be back Sunday night. Let me see. Let me look at some of your comments here. And um, it's been a it's been a long week. Um, let's see here. We've got Erica, and uh, who else we have? Uh, okay, Renee. All these shows are on audio podcast platform. I'll be uploading some more of the, um, of the shows to our audio in audio podcast platform this weekend. Well, we are on iHeartRadio, iTunes. Castbox, Stitcher, FM Player, etc. We're on nine different podcast platforms, and um, your commercials will run through uh, run during those podcasts also. And you can listen to nine ten a on the Superstation also through the iHeartRadio app. Do download the iHeartRadio app. You can listen to my show live and other shows on nine ten a.m. through the iHeartRadio app. But then I also have a separate page on iHeartRadio. Search for the African History Network show. 
and my shows are podcasted there as well. All right, look, we're going to get out of here. Uh, remember the African History Network. At the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. Um, everybody have a, a good weekend and we'll talk to you all Sunday night. Okay. We'll be we'll be back Sunday, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday. Peace. Nice Media is an indie black owned and operated film company specializing in culturally enriching black videos at melanizemedia.com. Join us every Sunday nights where we screen a socially cocky film or black historic presentation. That's every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Visit melanemedia.com to learn more and to register. That's M E L A N E Y E S media.com. Peace. Our Cuba Lines lifestyle attitude servitude. They focus on providing quality products and service. They're here to fulfill your African men's clothing, accessories, health and beauty products, essentials and fragrances, hair care products, and much, much more. Out their collection of clothing and products for African kings and queens. Visit their website. Alkebalon.com, A L K E B U L A N, Alkebalife.com. They look forward to serving you. Revitalizing, restorative, indulgent, essential. Create's Love Butter Raw Shea Butter Collection. How do we know if our skin products are truly delivering all of the health benefits they should? Create's Love Butter is a thoughtful combination and selected ingredients designed to enhance the level of your skin's health. Create Love Butter is an idea, gift, health conscious loved ones, and is a pleasure both give and receive. Mr. Rich powers of raw butter and infused it with their love and passion for revitalizing skin will undoubtedly feel the first use. Visit their website today, createlovebutter.com. C-R-E-S, createlovebutter.com. Put your skin in the game. Gain knowledge in minutes with Blacklist Ed. Blacklist Ed is an app that provides insightful summaries of books pertaining to the black experience. As black people, we know the importance of reading books to discover our credible conscience to world history, to uplift our self-esteem, to empower ourselves, a our relentless fight for social justice. Unfortunately, with our busy lives, it feels like never enough time to read. Fortunately, there's a solution. With Blacklist Ed app provides key insights from best-selling books of black experience. Therefore, time increasing your knowledge and empowering yourself through inspirational and actionable ideas. You can read or listen on the go. Start your free trial today by going to blacklisted.com. That's black without the C, B-L-A-K. Or you can download the Blacklist Ed app from the App Store or Google Play. Blacklist Ed, empower yourself. The revolution will not be televised, it will be digitized, coded, and ended. Let your young person get left behind. Join Tech Court on Saturday, September 26, 2020, in their sixth straight year, fighting tech, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and coding, and Saturday classes. TechCore 2's mission is to develop a technology pipeline program for urban youth from kindergarten to college to career entry. TechCore 2 offers nine different tech classes for students in grades kindergarten through high school, including computer programming, coding, gaming, hip hop and STEM and video production. All classes are online with live instruction. To register or for more information, please visit techcore2.org. That's techcore2.org. Give a call at 215-96701. That's 215-96701. Don't forget to grab your dollar discount with promo TA15.